very warm welcome to you all on Time Television when we bring you the latest edition of On the Tea and you're with me, Peter Kangere. Indeed, we are on Time Television and we're bringing you the latest edition of On the Tea. This is a program in which we talk about golf. I'm not alone in the program. We have our usual golf expert, Dingan Shiva. Welcome, Dingan. Thank you very much, uh, Peter. Let me be the one to welcome you all uh, to, to, to this program. Let me be the one to welcome you. Um, Peter is going to be our host from now onwards. He takes over from up by Albert Kanje. Uh, Albert Ngomo. Ngomo. Oh, Peter Kanjere. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, so from now onwards, it will be myself and Peter um, working together on this program. Thank you, so, thank you so much for welcoming me. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. And indeed, if golf is your vocabulary, you are in the right place at the right time. Today we'll talk about golf, 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 so that you get to know more about golf. How is it played? How can you play? What are the rules of the, of the game? So welcome once again. Today, to kickstart the program, we'll talk about professional golf. Uh, what is professional golf? Okay, um, very good question. Professional golf is um, an individual. Or should I say, who is a professional golfer? No, let's start with what professional golf is, perhaps. Professional golf is in two folds. Uh, but w what professional golf is, is um, an individual taking up golf as a profession. That's what it's about. So if it's your profession, it means that's where you draw your livelihood from. Okay, so professional golf is where... Means you are paid for to play. That is exactly. No, but I don't, want to talk as the, I don't want to talk about the actual play. But maybe for now, let's say a golfer decides to take up golf as a profession. It means that every day of their lives when they wake up, all they'll think about is golf. When you are <coughs> editing your, 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 your you newspaper yes. articles, etc., etc., the guy is busy on the golf course trying to work on the, his swing, etc., working on his game, playing the actual game, um, meeting a psychologist, meeting a, nutri a nutritionist, etc., etc. So that's what they do. And um, obviously, they wait for tournaments. When they play tournaments, they chase big money. They play for money. That's who a professional golfer is, okay? But then I've said it's just one fold. So maybe in a broad... Um, uh, in a broad sense, I would say that professional golf is golf played to earn a living, whereas amateur golf, because we have two types of golfers, amateur golf is played just for recreational purposes. Although, at some, at some point you may play golf at an elite stage en route to becoming a professional golfer. So is it like... You start off as an amateur, then you graduate into a professional, or you can go straight into professional golf? No one I was born a professional golfer. It can't <laughs> happen. You need to go through all the ranks of amateur golf. Even in the amateur category, we've got the beginners who belong to B division. We've got the intermediate golfers who belong to the A division. And then we've got the championship, championship division. These are guys that play elite golf. These are guys that, are make it, that make it to the Zone 6 when they're playing amateur international events. These are the guys that play off a single-digit handicap. Okay? These are the guys that um, stand a chance of turning professional. Now, assuming that I am a, an, amateur boxer, uh, an am amateur golfer, I go pro, can I go back and say, no, I can't cope with the demands of professional golf. I'm going back to amateur golf. You are supposed to, you are supposed to apply to the to, to, to the body that regulates amateur golf to accept you back. But now again, it depends on the setup that is there out there. Okay, maybe let's go and just talk about more about professional golf. Okay, now in professional golf, we've just talked about one element of a professional golfer, and that is playing on the tour. But there's another element of a professional golfer who earns money on the, um, through golf, but does not necessarily play on the tour. Do you know which type of people those are? The teaching professionals. 
You know that Tiger Woods plays very good golf. But do we know who's behind Tiger Woods' um, swing mechanism? We don't know. And it's usually the technical team that is behind him that will make him play very good golf. So you've got a swing expert. Some of them will employ a putting expert. Okay, some of them are going to employ um, uh, a bio. Some of them will bring in a physiotherapist. Some of them will bring in a psychologist. So if there are those people, if the, those people have gone through some training in golf, as in some, yeah, they've got a qualification. They've got some club diploma, uh, club professional diplomas, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and then they specialize in the golf swing. Some of them specialize in in uh, the physio part of the game. All those are known as professionals. Now, just golf. to cut you short, mm -hmm. you've talked about a tour. Speaking to a layman language, what are you saying? A tour in the literal sense, a tour? What, do you, wh what does a tour mean in professional golf? When we talk of a golf pro in golf, okay, I would talk about a, a tour professional and there's also a teaching professional. Like in my case, I'm a pro, not necessarily because I play very well on the tour, but because of uh, my knowledge. In, uh, in teaching. So I am called a teaching professional. My job is to teach. The one who plays on the tour is a person that wakes up and says, today I'm traveling to South Africa. There is a tour event there. There's a tournament taking place. So he's touring. It's globe trotting. So you tour, you go from one place to another to play these tournaments in search of money. So it's an income that you're going to, uh, yeah, that you are after. So there are times when you've got back-to-back -back events. A tournament, a normal setup is on a Wednesday, they play what we call pro-arm. It is a professional golfer with an amateur. So they play together, they mingle. It's a time that amateurs have got to mingle. And normally, it is um, mostly the elite uh, amateur golfers that will mingle with a tour professional. And so that they find out more about what it takes to become an actual professional uh, person on the tour. So it happens on a Wednesday. Then the actual game starts on Thursday. So maybe 120 entries on the golf course. If those guys go in and start playing, um, at the end of day one, they record the scores and rate the guys. Remember in golf, the, the, the less times you hit the ball to finish 18 holes, the better. Okay, So we finish 18 holes, and we go for day two. We finish the day two. After day two, there's what we call a cut. So from 120 golfers, probably what they are going to say is, we need only 60. So... Thursday, Friday, you play for the cut. On from Saturday and Sunday, you now chase some money because whatever happens, if you're within the top sixty, you're going to get a little something. How much you get is dependent on what position you finish. The better the position, the more the money that you're going to get. Okay, but maybe I jump to one area. Um, in Zimbabwe, we've got the Zimbabwe Open. In Zambia, we've got the Zambia, Zambia Open, Open and there's also the Sugar Open. Mm -hmm. We don't have any Open in Malawi. Although the Professional Golf Association in Malawi is working with um, uh, is working with the Umodi Park, so how different is the uh, Z Z say Zimbabwe Open, Zambia Open from the other tournaments that we have in Malawi? When all, you say Zimbabwe all Open, tournaments in Malawi, okay, maybe not. Let me not say all tournaments now because we just formed the Professional Golf Association in Malawi, and uh, we've had about four tournaments. Two of them invited by the golf union to play in the in their amateur events so they created the professional category the first one we played on our own yeah so we now have a professional tournaments taking place but we only eight of us that play professional golf the rest of them play amateur golf what you have heard in malawi from time in memorial has all been amateur golf okay yeah now yeah so i was talking about zambia so like for zambia open and these other opens uh, if they say 120 people is what they are looking for, they are going to get the ranked players. So you find that uh, our professional golfers in Malawi don't have a name. They are not ranked in any way. You only get ranked when you have made a cut on any tour. So we've never made a cut. None of our players have made a cut. We started with Gideon Capito, the late, very brilliant golfer a long time ago. A German couple uh, sponsored him to stay in South Africa for six months. He never made a, a cut, so meaning he never made any money. And he came back. So we now have Poch Darling. He's gotten close to making a cut. He's never made a cut. So where you where you are not rated, if they're looking for 120 people, they will say 100 automatic entry. 
then they'll ask the other guys who are unranked who are unrated to fight for 20 positions okay so it starts from there on a monday so people do the pre queue that's what we call it pre-qualification and those that make it will play the pro arm and then the game start on thursday friday saturday sunday it's set, it finishes off on sunday so from there if you're a tour pro you head of another one in and in, in swaziland then you fly to swaziland you go again it starts on monday people do their thing on wednesday you do your pro arm thursday friday saturday then you go elsewhere people that play good golf like tiger woods of this world when the season is at its peak they will not be at their house maybe for two months or three months they'll just be sleeping in hotels and playing the game so that's what a tour professional is that's interesting Dingan. and now we heard recently that they, you've launched the professional golf as you've rightly said mm. at what level are we and in the next five years where do you want to be first things first what at what level is professional golf in malawi um professional golf in malawi is still an infant a very small baby but what was key was to register to get started to get started we are yet to <coughs> For Malawi is how we are going to work with the Golf Union of Malawi. That is as professional golf association. Um, when, we, in the next five years, where do you hope to get? No, uh, I think it's very important that I stress this point here. First of all, we need to agree with Golf Union how, how we are going to work. It's very important. And then from there, we can probably, we can now put up our strategy. So talks are still going on. Golf Union has been there. They've worked on everything. They used to look after the professional golf on a very small scale. You may wish to know that um, in Africa, um, if you start a professional body, if you're going to work in, if you're going to play golf in Africa, first of all, you should be a member of the Sunshine Tour. So Sunshine Tour used to give four cards to every country. For you need a tour card for you to enter competitions. So now they've reduced it to one. But every time it was four, it was the golf union that would be contacted and golf union would submit names of those that can play on the tour and in most cases we never utilize that okay so now we have uh, we're in contact with the sunshine tour uh, our boys are playing right now the one who's got the complimentary or the affiliate affiliation membership in malawi the sports dare he got it without any competition but now we've, got, we've already played four tournaments uh, we're going to have the order of merit. So now there's competition that we've created. We are going. Uh, we, we are maintaining the order of merit. At the end of this year, the best professional golfer is going to get the tour card next year, a co uh, an affiliate uh, affiliation membership. So we are just getting started, and um, I'm pretty sure with what we have put up here, fighting for that card, all the boys are busy working. They're trying to practice, and I'm sure the standards of play are going to get better. Thank you so much. If you're just joining us, we're in the program for On the Tea, and we're talking to our usual golf expert, Dingan Chira. And now, what challenges are you facing on professional golf? Obviously, you, you when you're starting a thing, you have teething problems. What challenges are you facing uh, as professional golfers, and how do you hope to uh, to sail through to a desired state of professional golf? I'll be very honest. Let me, let me, maybe let me speak as... Uh, as a coach I'll speak as a coach um, I'll be very honest that um, I wish the professional golf association was formed a few years ago the guys that we have in um, in, in, in in our team playing today are people that played very high level amateur golf at some time uh, you talk of people like Pochidare Adam Silas they used to play solid golf when i'm talking of solid golf i mean it and um, in most cases if you follow a proper elite program you're supposed to turn pro when you are 18 19 years old now these guys some are 30 some are towards the end of 29 uh, towards the end of the 20 the last 20 um, years or so you it's difficult for them to cope with pressure they've got families to look after and uh, already, uh, I'm not saying that um, our system here is well paying. Uh, they still need to look for extra money to pay for, for, for their livelihood and to also look after their families. So the biggest problem that we have right now is that we don't have enough finances um, to put enough food on the table for these guys. And the level of play as well is not as it's supposed to be. 
because sometimes like we played last time at the Blunt Open, mm. it is an amateur golfer who became overall. He played the best golf out of everyone else, including the amateur golf, uh, the professional golfers. Thank you so much. We will take a, a short break and we'll be right back. <laughs> Just joining us, you are on Times Television, and we're talking strictly golf on on the tee. And I'm with Dingani Shirwa. Just to continue with the program, Dingani. Um, so far, how is the quality of players that we have as professional golfers in the in the country? Well, I would say quite poor. Um, <coughs> you are talking of individuals who dominated uh, amateur golf in Malawi for a long time. These are guys that would be sleeping every day of their lives and would wake up and practice just one month and still make it into the national team going to Zone 6. Because um, the only thing they could do was play for Zone 6. That's the biggest achievement that was there at that time. So after reaching their peak, they never worked hard to maintain that peak that they had gotten to. Um, they became so, uh, so relaxed. So I would say the way they are playing today is not the way they played when they were at their peak, when they were young and play very good golf. So the ones that are dominating today are fairly old people. They are, they are in their thirties or late twenties. Okay, so that's that's the biggest challenge. But like I said earlier, we have put up the first thing that we have done is we are trying to put up a tournament where money can be won every month. So far, we have done four tournaments, although some of them not independently on our own. Some of them, it's by invitation from Golf Union of Malawi. Okay? But still, fighting for a 200,000, 300,000 for the number one is not small money. So we've gotten these guys to start working very hard. Almost everyone that is playing professional golf has played uh, Zone 6 for a long time. So they know what, is it, what it takes to, to play at the high lef highest level. We're getting better. But the level of play is not very good, not at the moment. And now golf is, uh, I think, synonymous with the rankings. Ahead of the tournament, you would hear about the updated version of the rankings. Uh, do we have our players ranked? Do we know the number one? In Malawi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can tell you now. Um, okay, top ten. No, or top eight. You only have eight now? No, we're only eight. Okay, we're so, only eight guys. so how, how is the order for the uh, top eight? No, not top eight, because <laughs> <laughs> because number eight is at the bottom. Okay. <laughs> the, the players are only eight. Only eight. Yeah, so let's talk about maybe the top three. Top three. Okay, okay. so okay. the top okay. three, uh, but the first one right now is Adam Cyrus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he won the inaugural event and also won the one in Duangwa. I think he came runner-up on the other two. So he's gotten the highest points of the order of merit so far. It looks very good for him. In second position is our only international professional golfer Pochi Dale, oh. who's enjoying the tour card, the Sunshine Tour card, and uh, has had an opportunity of playing in a few international events this year. Yeah, so that's the second one. Uh, the third one is Victor Chikache Pasanga. Again, if you have a look at history in Malawi, when these guys were playing amateur golf, these were the top three. Although Gabriel, the lawyer, Gabriel Kambale, would come in and challenge them and win the number one spot, but because of his schedule and his profession, most of the times he'll not be able to practice. But for a long time running, Adam Sides, Poch Dali, and Victor Kachepasonga would just be exchanging the number one spot on the order of merit on the amateur section. So those are the guys that are doing very well. Which brings me to the next question. Are we investing in the right People, because I know, like for Tiger was to get to where he, he is, he was then. He started at a tender age. Are we, uh, by going professional, having people who have been in the system who have played amateur golf for a long time, and now we've introduced um, uh, professional golf, and now we're saying these are pros. Do you think at that age they can reach that level? Uh, yes and no. Um, Yes, in the sense that having had the experience, if only they can de dedicate their time. They'll not be the best of professional golfers, but I'm pretty sure they can win one or two things. But I would want Malawians and everyone else to look at the Professional Golfers Association setup a lot different. 
for us to, you asked me a very good question, that can you just join golf and become a professional golfer? And I told you no. No. And I'll tell you why. Because you need, first of all, to have experience on the amateur side. That's number one. Number two, you need to be five handicap and below. And this is a requirement rolled over. Okay. So if you, for you to attend the five handicap, you will have played a lot of golf. It takes a lot of experience for you to become five handicap. Okay. Now, we've got, like, I'll, may I'll speak on my own behalf. The program that I've got in the southern region, I always tell people, you can challenge me. I can produce for you. I can give you names of world-class eight-year-olds, world-class nine-year-olds, world-class ten-year-olds, and eleven-year-olds. I've got those in the system. And next year, I can give you world-class twelve-year-olds. The other year, I'll give you world-class thirteen-year-olds. By the time the kids are getting to 17 years old, they'll be playing f prolific golf. And if we can support the professional association side, it means all these older guys, what they're doing right now, they'll keep playing there, they'll get the experience, and they'll come and share with the association. As we grow, the kids that will come and enter there are going to have the right approach towards succeeding in these games. In these games. All I'm trying to say is the older guys are laying a foundation for the future. What you're saying sounds too good to be true. How can you rate your players as world class when they haven't played in an international competition? Well, I, I get I get information. Um, I've been in school with other coaches from other countries. I know what is a good score. Uh, I've, I've found out several times what good scores of 11 year olds who've played championships have been. Yeah, so I know what I'm talking about. That is the level where they're at. The, the handicap would also give you an idea. I'll tell you, we've got one Akuzike Kunsinda. The boy is 11 years old, playing off 22 handicap. That's a serious achievement. It's okay. really only 11 years old. The boy can hit the ball very far. In the next two years, I expect, I expect that boy to play in the national team. Because yeah, he's going to drop his handicap by far. The challenge we have in Malawi is that uh, oftentimes our athletes, as they are growing up, they are often discouraged by their parents about sports. You know, this perception about sports. Are you getting the right support from the guardians of the parents so that these kids can eventually make it as a pro? Uh, well, besides being a director and a member of the Professional Governors Association, I am employed by Golf Union of Malawi. And uh, one of Golf Union's strategic plan was to introduce golf in schools. And that was there to counter what you have just said. Okay? Parents will tell you, my child cannot come there because of ABCD. Today, I am proud to say, Alliance Capital bought the idea, Alliance Capital Limited. They are the main financiers of programs in schools. And we're expanding every year that passes. Uh, we had our national finals last um, about two weeks ago, and uh, we just unveiled a team from Namua Primary. It is a government-run institution through the Golf Union of Malawi. I teach those kids; they don't pay anything. We get equipment from Golf Union, golf balls from Golf Union, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They are coming to learn how to play golf. What am I trying to say? To counter parents not bringing their kids, we have decided to start campaigning that we make golf part of the school curriculum. And in terms of uh, the support of the private sector, we always have, when you talk about sports, the next thing you ask is about sponsorship. Are you getting the right support from the corporate world in terms of supporting the professional setup that you are trying to achieve? It is new, um, so far so good. I think what we have achieved right now is something we, would not have, uh, we never thought of. The good way is there. We need just to show, first of all, work on our game. I think they would want to pay uh, professionals who have produced scores that are out of this world. So we have a lot of work to do in terms of playing and, and getting the actual uh, scores. But so far, the pledges that are there, and even those that have come forth, is just overwhelming. We are extremely grateful to the corporate board for the warm response so far. Now, if you look at the golf setup, and this bright idea of going professional, of introducing professional golf, mm. do the facilities and professional golf match in terms of the, the golf clubs? Are they at par in terms of the international standards? Not per se. Um, 
I'll tell you some of the conditions that we play under here are actually more harsh than out there. Okay? But uh, unfortunately, you know the way these guys make up the tournaments? Outside there, there is uh, what they call tour courses, which we don't have here. Tour course will be easy to play on, but we'll just put in one or two tricky issues that you need to learn. But going forward, what we want to do is expose our guys as much as possible. So the first one, like we've said, is going to get a card. So meaning he's going to travel uh, in most of these countries to, to, to compete and to represent our country. The other two will try as much as possible that they try to compete in lower, lower leagues. Because the Shine Shine Tour is a super league of African golf. But you've got the big easy tour uh, sponsored by any else. We are in talks with those people. We get these guys going. They can get even on a coach to South Africa. They stay in a simple place, try to win a few monies here and there. And by so doing, they'll be getting exposed. Are we getting the right support of, in terms of expertise, international expertise, from the relevant international bodies, so that we do the right things in terms of getting the basics right? Yeah, so I'll just very quickly just talk about why some of these things are not moving at the moment. Um, it is very important that the, the, the mother body for golf in Malawi has always been golf in Malawi. Our coming in means that there has to be a proper working relationship. Uh, in other countries like Uganda, there's one Uganda Golf Association. In there, there's one that looks after amateur golf. And there's another one that looks after lady golf, junior golf, and professional golf. So there are four arms in there. Okay? It could be the same setup here. Or maybe golf union will say you should be on your own. So we need to wait for them. They are the, the superior guys right now, and we we'll just need to get guidance from them. So now, what is supposed to happen is, as professional golf association in Malawi, we are supposed to be affiliated to the European professional golfers associations, not one association, associations. There's one big body where every European PGA belongs to, including every European uh, African PGA. African didn't want to put up one mother body for all PGAs. So all African PGAs belong to the European PGA. So the moment we get affiliated, we we'll not only get funding, but also get the expertise that we require. So there will be either sending us for training or they'll bring in people to come and train us here and guide us until this thing grows. So we are supposed to be affiliated to them. Are you being gender, gender sensitive? There is pro go for the ladies. Uh, so far, it looks like the, the professional golf it only involves the men. Are you thinking along the lines of balancing the gender? Aspect? Unfortunately, not at the moment, unless a few things change. I think things may change as we go on. I'll tell you what, if you try to Google, we have the USPGA, which belongs to the men, and we have the LPGA, the US LPGA, which is the Ladies Professional Golf Association. When we are starting to play the game, there's what we call a tee box. The ladies will play on their own tee box, and men also play on their own tee box. It is very rare that you find a man competing with a lady. It doesn't, it doesn't happen usually. At Blunt as Sports Club, if it, if it happened, it would be ca catastrophic, because where we say, you know what we call par, a par. On, on, on hole number four at Blanda Sports Club, our hole is rated five. Rating is five, par. They tell you to hit the ball five times to be at par with the golf course. The ladies on the same hole are told to hit the ball four times. Now my question was, you being part of the setup of the golf union, are you encouraging the ladies to also embrace professional golf so that they can have their professional golf as you oh okay yeah. on that one um i'll tell you that my program involves both the girls and the boys yeah because i know you teach the kids the girls and the boys yeah we teach them but um, our level of teaching or whatever we do has nothing to do with the professional golf association at the moment and i don't think the girls have gotten to that level that they'll start even talking about playing professional golf they have not even gotten to elite the elite level of playing off a single handicap. So maybe until then, uh, there are no plans of uh, including them on the professional side. Now you talked about uh, countries like Uganda having one mother board looking after the pros, the ladies, the amateurs. So far, have you figured out how you want to proceed? Whether you'll be a standalone association or you'll still be under the golf union? How? How are you thrashing that one out? On that one, um, it's a, a bit difficult for me to respond. Uh, there are people that were tasked to look after that. Um, 
there's a team of people that are trying to find the best way of, of operating. So until that is done, uh, we, cannot, we cannot proceed and talk about it. We need to wait for the outcome of the agreement, and I'm sure everyone else is going to be informed of, of how, how best things are going to be handled. Now, Dingan, uh, when you go professional in golf, what does this mean to the caddies now? I, in terms of uh, their approach to, the, to, 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 I mean, to professional golf, is it the same, same way they do with the amateurs, or there are some do's and don'ts once you start working with the pro golf? Uh, in golf, can I, can I say that maybe the issue of caddies should be a topic on its own? I think it's something that we really need to talk about. But in a nutshell, I'll tell you that people that caddy for tour pros out there are probably coaches like me. Some of them are actually maybe good golfers as well, but they've just not got into that level. Those are the people that will normally coach. Um, being a caddy has a very significant, you, a, a caddy plays a very significant role in someone's success. That's why it has to be someone who's very knowledgeable, someone that is trained, and not just anyone who picks up a bag. So we can talk about that and look at the many levels. Unfortunately, Dingan, time is not on our side. As usual. But it was a pleasure having you, enlightening us about golf. Okay, thank you very much. Thank uh, you, our viewers. Uh, today we're talking to Dingan Chirwa, and we, we don't much on professional golf. Until we meet again next week, is goodbye. <laughs>